Hello everyone, here I am again before your listening ears to tell you what thus says the Lord. The sermon clip today is entitled, God's Jewels. The scripture reading is taken from the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 17, from the King James Version. Now this is the Lord speaking in Malachi, chapter 3, verse 17. He says, And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spare his own son that serve him. Amen? Don't you know that there is something about you that allows you to radiate? Think about it. You glow because the Savior dwells in you and because of the wisdom and knowledge of God's Word. You glow because of God's fruit planted in you. Haven't you ever noticed that when you walk into a room, your light is shining so bright that people automatically notice you from everyone else? That's because you are a jewel in the making of God's crown. God is refining, buffing, polishing, and shining you like gold and silver to make you clean. Don't you know that's why you can go to work with a smile on your face? That's why you can help others without giving it a second thought? That's why you can freely talk about Jesus even when people tell you not to. That's why you are a cheerful giver. That's why you are obedient to the church needs because you belong to God and you know that it pleases him. Haven't you ever noticed people looking at you as though you are strange? I got news for you. Don't get mad. You are strange. You are a peculiar people. You are an alien in this land. You don't belong in this world of evil and wickedness. And this makes you a peculiar people. This word peculiar means in the Hebrew language, it means a jewel. You are a treasure. You are of wealth. You are like that diamond shining beautifully, which means you are something of value to God. To simply put it, we as believers in Jesus the Christ are God's jewels in the making. And we are dear to him. He has set you apart. He chose you to be his jewel in the making. He wants you to know today that you are a treasure to him. This is why the Lord has claimed you as his own and will spare you when it's all said and done. And that's something to smile about. To know in your heart of heart that you are God's jewel in the making. Even through all your mess, all of your iniquities, and all of your hang-ups, God still considers you a treasure, His jewel in the making of His crown. Amen? But here comes old Satan. He comes around and try to make you feel pretty doggone worthless as he tries to beat you down. You see, Satan don't want you to come to the realization that you are a jewel to be set in God's crown. He don't want you to realize that. So Satan will throw every curveball at you, having you to believe that you can't depend on God to handle it. 
He doesn't want you to put all your cares on the Lord. And as a result, you begin to feel like a rhinestone instead of a diamond. But take heart. The Lord says, you are precious in my eyes. God says, and I love you. You don't have to take my word for it. Read it in Isaiah 43, 4. Read it for yourself. Listen, God never said he loved a diamond, but he does say he loves you. I'm here to tell you today that time is winding down for this world as we know of it to come to an end. And although no man know the day or the hour of Jesus' return, but what we do know is that time is near because we can see the birth pains as our indicator. Now, we don't know how much time we have left in this world, but we are crowning. And before you know it, the birth pains will end and the world's end will be delivered. But only Dr. God knows the day and the hour. And just as it is written in Zechariah 9.16, we as believers can look forward to this as well. As it says, And the Lord, their God, shall save them in that day, as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his land. So you see, when the earth is burned like something worthless, He will preserve us as His jewels. How beautiful is that? The Lord will lift us up like a flag blowing in the wind upon His land. But in order for you to be preserved as one of God's jewels, you must be ready. Don't be like the foolish virgins in Matthew 25, 1 through 13, without the oil that represents the Holy Spirit, as Zechariah 4 and 1, 7 tells us, or of obedience and righteous living in your lamp, not carrying the gospel with you everywhere you go. Don't be unprepared to enter heaven when Jesus returns. Don't wait till the last minute to try to fill your lamp with oil. You should already be so full of the oil and your lamp filled with life, the light of divinity, wisdom, intellect, and good works. You should be shining so bright that it would be impossible for the Lord to miss you when he returns because you are shining ever so brightly. I can only imagine the smile on Jesus' face, the tenderness and love in his heart as he sees you standing before him. And he says, Come, my good and faithful servant. Job well done. And he beamed you up. Oh, how we will sparkle like jewels in his land. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. You see, this is an individual thing. I can't get your lamp or fill your lamp with oil. This is something you have to do on a personal level. Amen? You have got to want to be chosen by God. Now I want you to imagine for a moment how Moses and Elias Elias. must have felt to have appeared with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Can you imagine their hearts leaping for joy as Moses stands representing the law and Elijah representing the prophets? As they witnessed Jesus transfigured, Jesus' face shining as the sun and his garments becoming white as the light 
And you'll find that reading in Matthew 17, verse 2. Oh, what a wonderful vision to hold in our mind's eye. And then Jesus begins to speak. Wow. 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 I ask you today, to those that have not confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, don't you want to be a jewel in God's crown? Don't you want the Father to choose you? Listen, as believers, the Lord said, you are the salt of the earth. So don't lose your savor. He said, you are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill. It cannot be hid. That's Matthew 5, 13 through 14. And the Lord goes on to say in verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Listen, as a believer, you are the light that shines bright doing good works. And let me tell you something. Men can see your good works, and it's not for boasting that you are doing these good deeds, but it's all for the glory of God. You work in the kingdom of God because you choose to work for God, the master, because you love him so much. That is why your light shines like a city set on a hill and you can't hide it. You just can't hide it. Isaiah 62, 3 tell us how God holds his crown. That verse reads, Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. What is a diadem? It's a jeweled headband used as a royal crown. My, my, my. You see, you are a jewel in the making to be set in God's crown. Amen? But you know what? Sometimes we just have to ask, why me, Lord? Why did you choose me? Over everybody else, you chose me. Well, here's your answer to that question. That's right. He chose you. You didn't choose him. He even ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain so that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in his name, he may give it to you. That's John 15, 16. So go ahead and read it for yourself because all this time you wonder why the Lord chose you. And all this time, it was in John 15, 16, the answer to your question. Our Savior could have taken you out of this world, but he prayed to the Father. He prayed and said, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but thou shalt keep them from the evil. That's John 17, 15. You see, the Lord, he could have allowed you to escape the rage of men by taking you out of the world. But you see, God had a purpose just for you. He chose you to do a great work for the glory of himself. So let me say this. God did not choose you to become lovers of yourself, to get drunk with men, get high with men, to steal, lie, and to kill, to curse with men, to cheat, or to commit adultery. That's not God. That's of your father, the devil. That's that spirit of Mr. Hyde. God chose you as his jewel for the benefit of himself to glorify him. What a special treasure 
you are. You are a jewel in the making for the Lord. And so, your so-called friends may ask you, why are you so happy all the time? And you can honestly tell them because I am God's jewel in the making for his crown. (laughs) My, amen. If you want to be one of God's jewel in the making, the time is now to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, believing that he died for the sins of man and was risen by God three days later, and you shall be saved. Allow God to choose you. Allow him to choose you. Amen? Now, if you like the sermon clip, share it with somebody so that they can be chosen by God for the making of God's crown. Now, I don't own the rights to the music or the graphics, but I thank God for them. I am Minister Sharon Ford of Spiritual Care Southfield. May God be with you until we meet again. Amen. Until next time.